Media by Sideline Sports. Hope y'all are having a great Thursday evening. Hopefully you had a good Thursday. We're one day away uh, from getting to the weekend. And after tomorrow, we've got one more sleep after tonight. And we will wake up and it will be game day against Virginia Tech. And I know that most of everyone's looking forward to that. Um, we do have an in particular Noel uh, that is on um, X, which is formerly known as Twitter, uh, that she deserves to have a 1,000 followers at bare minimum. Um, she's given a lot of weight to Florida State fans, champion club tickets, and numbers of other things. Um, she's sitting somewhere around 800. It's it's Sky Knoll, but I will put it in the description of the video, her actual tag. I want as many of y'all that watch this show to go give her a follow on um, X as you can because she also has a Florida State um, business that's got like keychains and decals and different stuff like that. Uh, so I would love for y'all to support what Sky Knoll's doing. Uh, so I will put the description or I will put her um, follow tag in the description of the video. So give it about 10 minutes after the video ends and you'll see her uh, where you can follow her at. But I follow her, so it's really easy to find. You type in Sky Knoll, you'll find her. Um, but I will definitely put it in there so it'll make it easier on everyone. Oh, how do we start this? So we're, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the game a little bit first because Chip might have to get off before the show ends. Plus, he doesn't care anything about talking about recruiting, and that's the majority of the show. So, Chip, we're going to start with you. Um, it is being stated that Virginia Tech's offensive line is very young and also undersized. They're undersized and they're young. What do you want to see from Florida State's defensive front? Just the four guys, not necessarily the linebackers or if we bring pressure. But what do you want to see from our defensive line that gets an inexperienced group that Virginia Tech has? I want to see our defensive front truly manhandle these youngsters. I want to see basically Virginia Tech's offensive line and their, their, their front five, I want to see their will to live just sucked out of them. Um where they don't even want to step on the field for the rest of the game. That's what I want to see, and that's what I think, honestly believe we will see. And I'm going to go back-to-back -back questions with you real quick. Um, James, if you can see the screen, that question's for you, and I'm going to let you answer it after if you want to. If you don't want to answer it, don't. Um, but, Chip, with our offensive line getting Robert Scott back, Maurice is going to be back for his second game of the season. Um, and we haven't been able to run the ball very well. Virginia Tech doesn't seem to have the greatest defense. They're ranked 10th overall in passing, but that can be very deceptive because they haven't really played anybody. Uh, do you think that Florida State's offense really gets the running game going in this game? And if so, what do you think it means for the rest of the season if we really get the running game going in this game in particular? Well, it's, uh, getting the running game going is only going to open things up for Jay Trav, Johnny Wilson, uh, Keon Coleman, uh, and the rest of our our bunch of freaking stallions that we got that are just itching, itching to make plays. Um, the key for us is going to have to be um, Benson running north and south. Like, I, I've never been – thrilled on him being east and west i believe that's more tola feely can be rodney hill can be kazaya holmes we uh, benson and i'm sorry for the sorry for all the noise we're at uh mosley's playing south walton right now but um it's got to be trey benson has to get on track this game he's got to be able to get his confidence up and i know he's he's itching to get released and this has to be his statement game. James, when we talk about particular gentlemen from the school that you are coaching at right now, I have been explaining to multiple uh, fans that have been asking about the 25 class and the 26 class. 
a lot of folks feel like we're almost filled in the 24 class, which I can understand that, that we are. Um, is there any 25 kids or 26 kids that Florida State should be or already is looking at from your high school in particular? I mean, they're looking at the, the all three of my guys. You know, they've got – you've got um, obviously Jamie French um, committed to Alabama. Um, like I tell people, I'm as involved or active in recruiting for Florida State as Florida State asked me to be. Outside of that, I am just a mentor um, to these young men. So, actually, we, me, and, me, Jamie, and Derek um, were having a conversation today um, in, in um, Toby's office. Um, and then you've got um, Drake. Drake will actually be at Miami this weekend, going to Miami, see Miami versus Georgia Tech. Um, the benefit of that is his older brother is a walk-on at Florida State. Um, he came in his last class. So uh, Florida State um, has a, in theory, has a leg up when it comes to that. But uh, Miami wants him. And then our 2026 class, we have a wide receiver that, everybody will know more of next year uh what's red's real name i don't know his name is red anybody want to take a guess why his name's red you know do we need michael langston to write an article about <laughs> about his name being red is, is that is definitely not in his name but um he's um a really really good wide receiver um who will be there uh who will be in our 26 class and we have a d tackle that would be pretty uh well he thinks he's a dn but he got hurt. So we got right now we got two kids in our 26 class um, that show promise. But you really never know until they get um, older. But we only have one guy. Obviously, Tramel is committed. Um, but we have Derek Plaz in this class of 2024 who is a take. Um, interesting thing. Um, I know it's not – I know I'm pretty sure they're not going to do it in sporadics um, in, your, um, in your YouTube community and the different things like that. But – um, you know, I would I, troll the troll adults, troll players. Just be careful how you talk about um athletes and stuff like that. And, and some of the stuff, so what you know, just some of the things that they read and then they come in, they can because you're lucky they have somebody like me who's been through the process on all sides who kind of can communicate and understand. And I know some of y'all are just dicks on message boards, but like. It's kind of weird and wild, like some of the things like, you know, he's only using us to get more money out of Miami. So what? Like, who cares? Like, even if you even if that were true, who cares? Or he's begging or he's thirsty to be invited in this class. Like you have no like if like trust me, Derek ain't coming over there because they don't want him to come over there. Like they, if he decided to decommit and commit tomorrow, um, they would take his commitment. Um, I, I can promise you that, but, um, it's just, you know, like I said, it's, it's interesting. Um, some of the things and that's, but I get to te teach them lessons. I'm like, this is why you don't read message boards. Nobody told you dumbass. I tell them the same thing. My grandmother told me, Nobody told you dumbass to read, go out there and block better. Um, and, and nobody will care. And this is the young man that came with, with us to the Southern Miss game, correct? Yeah, yeah, that's the guy, man, who came. Very good. Very, very, very good young man. Well, you know, I, you and I were standing right there and seeing exactly how excited Mike Norvell got when we walked him into the recruiting area. And, and excitement was probably an understatement. Mike really, really liked the fact that Derek was there. And I, I would also say um, Alex Atkins was extremely excited to see him as well. But I'm not sure – you know, why anyone would troll the young man, period, or especially if you're a Florida State fan, that doesn't make much sense. Like, if we're trying to flip somebody or we're trying to get them on campus as much as possible, who cares what he's doing or why he's there? I know that our coaches are highly interested in getting him in this class. So let's not make it harder on ourselves than it has to be. He's already a Miami verbal, but he hadn't signed a dotted line nowhere. And as many times as he wants to come back to Florida State, he's going to come back to Florida State. So I don't know what the worry is here or why we got to put in two cents. I mean, I, I kind of get it to an extent because we got certain media members that do this shit, uh, you know, make up false injuries. They, they make up stories so they get clicks. And I guess people think that it's easier to become noticed by being a complete dickhead than it is being sincere and being true to yourself. So I, I guess that's what it – I guess that's the, the way around it. I guess trolling 
get you noticed a lot quicker than just speaking positive or speaking, you know, uh, correctly to a young man that's trying to make a hard decision. Probably a decision that most of you have never had to do or probably never will. And I, and I get it. Sometimes it's jealousy. Sometimes it's not. We'll see. Uh, but I, I hope that, that none of these trolls get into that young man's head at all. I don't think they will. The way that he carried himself or, around me for a very short period of time that he was there a couple hours um, seems to have his head on uh, extremely straight, very respectable. Uh, I, huge young man. I'll, I'll put it that way. And I would love to see him on the line myself. So I, I don't know why anybody would be upset with that. Uh, Chip, real quick. We we're looking at Johnny Wilson not scoring a touchdown so far. He's been a hell of a wide receiver as far as yardage goes and quite a few games up to this far. Do do you think that he gets past this little hump? Because I think people are worried about it when they shouldn't be. But do you think Johnny Wilson scores a touchdown versus Virginia Tech Saturday? Uh, yes, I think this is going to be the game that he actually gets off. And what I mean by getting off, like I expect him that night to be to probably spill more seed in Tallahassee than Muhammad Ali at a bird feeder. Well, I like that. I do. I do. I like that a lot. So you know, a lot of a lot of Florida State fans are are talking a lot about, in particular, recruits. Uh, for in you know 24 class 25 class 26 class they're talking about in, individuals um we're going to talk about guys that are 100 percent coming to the florida state virginia tech game a lot of people are wondering why is it taking so long everybody needs to remember that florida state's had one home game so far this season that was southern miss we had about 60 65 recruits at that game and it was southern miss so we're just now getting back home we're about to be on a three-game run where we're at home three weekends in a row. So you're going to see a, a decent amount of recruits each and every weekend, starting with this weekend against Virginia Tech. Is Virginia Tech a huge team, a big game? No. But Florida State owes them one for when Willie Taggart opened his tenure up, and we were doing some swag surfing bullshit on the field, and we got our asses beat. So now we have payback. So that's what's big about this game. Um, but we've got uh, Daytona Beach, Florida. L.J. McCray is going to be here Saturday in Tallahassee. Huge opportunity to, to try to land this young man, a great talent, uh, someone that every the big three all want him uh, in multiple other schools. But if you was to ask me, it's between us and one of the other uh, teams in the big three. And I think the Florida State has started doing a phenomenal job on getting this young man possibly committed so it it's going to be a huge moment for him he's on an official visit so it's going to be a big deal for him on saturday i think that uh the red carpet obviously is going to get rolled out for him but he's going to have a, a huge impact on what other guys are seeing with him being on an official and then you got to bring up the guys that are going to be watching it they're on unofficials so they're going to see firsthand how guys get treated at florida state when they're on an official visit that's huge because that's what you, you kind of want that every time that you've got a decent amount of recruits coming. One or two guys are on official visits so that the unofficials can say, hey, I have to take an official visit here because that that was like being treated like a king. That was this or that was that. So it's, it's really important to have at least one. But if you have a couple of guys getting, you know, on an official visit, it's big for recruiting. Uh, but LJ McCray is the guy that is – uh, really big for this class. It would be really good for the defensive line. It would be really good for Odell Hagan, so everybody will leave him alone. Um, but I think we have a really good shot with that. And some of the guys that are coming, um, they're already committed to Florida State verbally. But I've, I've explained this to everybody. Everybody's like, oh, this kid, we got him. Like it's already said and done. We have got to continue to recruit these kids like we do not have them because they haven't signed anything. So if you don't want the – the the Falk or the uh, George I mean uh, Travis Hunter uh, and a couple other one things to happen you have to recruit these guys to the last minute and until they sign their letter of intent none of this matters it's fair game so if you look 
I'm willing to bet Dart Wick on that. McCray is Georgia or Florida bound. I'm, I'm willing to bet you on that one uh, big time if you want to put money up. Um, but we've got four-star quarterback Luke Kermanhawk, which is an FSU verbal. 2024 quarterback is um, obviously doing a really good job in his high school career. Uh, it's the second season starting. Uh, then you go to four-star 2025 QB commit at James's high school here. Um, Tremel Jones will be at Florida State this weekend. Mm-hmm. And then you've got four-star 2025 running back Tavion Swint. He's a UCF commit. Uh, I don't think that sticks. I think he ends up going elsewhere, but we'll see what happens. Uh, you've also got four-star uh, Camden Fryer. Um, that name should be very familiar to everyone, seeing how his father played here. So did his uncle. And then you look at four-star wide receiver B.J. Gibson. He's also committed to Florida State. You've got three-star 2025 wide receiver uh, Dalen Upshaw. Wait a minute. Okay, I know who that is now. I was wondering. I was like, wait a minute. But we've also got four-star wide receiver, 2025, Kobe Howard. We've got three-star, 2025 wide receiver. Uh, We're going to go with Isaac because I'm not even going to try to pronounce that first name. And then we've got three-star, 2025 wide receiver, Carl Jenkins Jr. Five-star tight end, Landon Thomas. For 2024, and then you've got 2025 tight end Hayden Bradley. He's not committed to anyone yet. You've got four-star offensive line Jonathan Daniels, who is committed to Florida State verbally. Three-star offensive line Jaden Todd that's verbally committed. And it says that the official list says that Derek Plaz is coming. He's but, coming. I've he's yeah, coming. what I've been told is he was going to Miami. No, nah, he's not going anywhere this weekend. He's not, he's going, not anywhere. going anywhere. He's not okay. going anywhere. Next time he goes to Miami, will be Clemson. And the next he, time he um, comes to us will be when we Miami. play Miami. I when got we you. Play Miami. Um, you know, you never know. He may decide to come on. I mean, r- right now, from what I was getting from the source, he's not coming. Like he yeah. said, I'm not coming to Tallahassee now. He may decide that he wants to come over because I think um, Tremel is. Tremell is coming over and going back yeah. after the game. So, um, you know, but I don't think this is a pressing um, game for him to come to. Um, but, yeah, he was just like, Coach, I don't know what these people are talking Like, when I tell you, they're just so tired of, like – and this is why what, what I'm going to end up doing at Mandarin and is, is more of a protecting my guys. Um, again, I would love for them to go to Florida State um, if that's where they want to go. I don't care. I'm a fan of the kids um, and wanting them to do the best. But, like, it is a grind, man. Like, between coaches calling you 24-7 and media calling you from all different kind of entities. So just think, if you got 10 schools um, that, that you're kind of thinking about, it, so that's three, four coaches from each school. So that's 40 people. There's each school probably has you got at least a minimum of on three, two, four, seven, and arrivals. So it's probably three to five different media outlets that are hitting you up once to, once or twice a week. Um, and some of them, they're not even you're not even giving them information. They're just they're just saying stuff. And it's kind of like, coach, I didn't say that, or I don't even know who this person is. I've never talked to this person. Yeah. But a lot of it could be um corroborated or easily followed up on. Um, so we're going to probably – a lot of guys are going to probably not be able to get in contact with with some of our guys as much next year. Um, yeah. But that's more so because it affects the season. I mean, they yeah. don't know how to do – they. They're, you're talking about a bunch of 17- to 18-year-old boys that, that nobody in their family has has kind of gone through this. Like, um, right. you know, they're enjoying the process just as much as the kid is enjoying the process. But you got to keep the main thing the main thing, which is performing on the field. And then next year, especially, um, you know, there's rumors that we may have an ESPN game, which, yeah, to be honest with you, I don't know what that – I mean, I know what it's like to play on a college level on an ESPN game, but I don't know – have no idea what all that entails on the um, on the prep level. But, you know, imagine trying to keep everybody, you know, calm um, on, on that. So, um, but, yeah, but Derek, from what I understand, 
won't be coming to this game. Um and um and and yeah, that's about it. Then we've also got 2026 offensive lineman uh Kel Ellis, 2026 offensive lineman Desmond Green, three star edge Jordan Boyd, five star 2025 edge Zion Grady, four star 2026 edge Cam Brooks, four star 2025 defensive line Jalen Wiggins, four star 2025 defensive line Amir Adams. uh, Four-star 2025 defensive line Isaiah Gibson. Four-star 2025 defensive lineman Mario Nash. You remember how I've been telling everybody that 2025 is going to be really big for the defensive line, guys? Like, we're going to really recruit the defensive line, linebackers. There's going to be particulars that we're going after. Every one of those players I just named are defensive linemen or edges, which is still a defensive lineman. But – you, you, we're four star, five star, four star, four star, five star, and then you go back into some of the guys that are already committed to FSU. You got five star defensive back KJ Bolton coming back, five star defensive back Charles Lester coming back, four star DB Ricky Knight coming back, four star twenty twenty five DB Martellus Carter Jr., and then you've got four star twenty twenty five DB Devin Williams, and then you got your kicker, three star kicker Jake Weinberg. He'll be there as well. And then you've got four-star 2025 athlete, Kendarius Riddick. So, and I'm going to say this. None of the media that gets these official lists together end up ever being 100% right. Just like, unless Derek decides to, Derek has said with his own mouth that he's not coming to this game. Also, I know seven other guys that are really big commits for the 24 class three for the 2025 class that have told me that they're 100% common and they're not on anyone's list. Two of them are five stars and the rest of – well, all but one of them is a four-star. And seven of them are 24 commits. So – and if they told me they're coming, I fully expect them to come because I don't ask the way that other media sites do it. I, I don't go and hound anybody. There's common interest with graphics and stuff made. They write me on – Instagram or Twitter or whatever, and then we talk back and forth for a second, ask them if they're coming. I get a yes or a no. I don't get a maybe. Uh, If I can find a ride, I don't get any of that. Uh, So when they tell me they're coming, everyone so far that's told me that they're coming, they come. But we've got a huge list of guys that are definitely coming to this game. And, you know, a lot of folks are worried about our defensive line recruiting. They're worried about our linebacker recruiting. And all I can tell you is is that the 24 class, while you see five stars, you see four stars, you see this guy and that guy, Florida State wasn't high on a whole lot of them in the first place. They were very particular about what guys that they were going to add, you know, an offer to. And L.J. McCray is one of them. And L.J. McCray is, is a huge piece to wherever he goes. If he ends up at Florida, great. I don't think he's going to Florida. Matter of fact, next few days, I think you're going to see one, two, maybe three Florida commits decommit. Then you look at Miami. Miami is trying to take every wide receiver they possibly can. They And if you ask them, they're getting Jeremiah Smith, JoJo Trader, Carr, uh, McCoy. They're taking everybody. They're, they're going to have 14 wide receivers by the names of what you put it out there, they say, yep, we're getting him. That's, that kid's a lot, been a lot. Y'all just don't know it. He's a lot. I don't know who gives Miami fans their information, but they were really, really wrong this year, uh, like big time. All of the de- defensive linemen they were supposed to take, they didn't get. A, they haven't gotten a verbal from one of them. As a matter of fact, every one of them has verbally committed elsewhere. So – all I can tell you is, is that there has been a huge gap made up with Florida State and L.J. McCray. That, that's as far as I'm going to say it. They have started doing a phenomenal job with him. He's very intrigued. He's taken his official visit. He's leaning toward Florida State right now as far as the official visit goes. Am I saying he's 100% coming? No. Am I saying we have a hell of a shot? Yes. It's more than just a puncher's chance. 
we have a really good shot at landing this kid. I think this visit goes very well. Um, it could give him a huge decision to make. And you also look at the running back from 2025's class. Each year, Florida State's going to take a bare minimum of one running back. It's what it looks like. There's been years where we take two, uh, but also there's a particular kid that's a wide receiver that Florida State has extended an offer to in the cahoots of him possibly becoming a DB because in high school he plays both sides of the ball. They like the way he plays DB better than they do the way he plays wide receiver. And he's fully open to it. Says that he doesn't care what side of the ball he plays on. That kid will be here this weekend as well. And I think we have a huge chance at landing him as well. If we get, if we don't get Carr, oh well, congratulations to whomever he goes to. But I'm telling y'all how, how much this all changes when December finally arrives. When I said on my post, don't be surprised if Carr lands at Florida State. I didn't say that he's not going to verbally commit somewhere else. I didn't say that he was 100% coming. I just said don't be surprised. Based off of everything that I've heard his relationship with Coach Dugans and Coach Norvell was, we'll see. That's all I can say. We'll see. Right now, uh, you've noticed, I think everyone's noticed, and James – has probably noticed it as much, if not more, than anyone else. Florida State recruits different than Miami. Florida State recruits different than Florida. Matter of fact, Florida State recruits different than anybody. They give these guys a long leash to do whatever they want, enjoy every visit. They don't tell kids not to take visits. They don't tell kids not to enjoy the process. They go the long route. They take the long road to recruiting. And at first, and y'all have heard me complain about it. I didn't like it because we weren't winning yet. The wins weren't there to stack up to say you could do this long game. James, do you think that the way that Florida State staff is recruiting is efficient? Or is there things that they should change the way that they recruit? You don't have to get in specifics. All you got to say is they need to change some things. Or you like what they do or both. But what are your thoughts on how they recruit? Any, any and every position? Um, I think, you know, just from my experience, and, and some of it is, you know, I think it's just a, for me, it's a unique, weird a weird place that, that they're in because nobody quite knows what I do. Uh, they always see me in something different. Um, people, for whatever reason, care about my opinion. You'll see me in a green jacket um, at a game. You'll see me doing some nonprofit stuff. It's just a lot of different stuff, but, um, which I always find weird and no offense to you, but like you'll, Chris got sources and they'll talk to Chris, but like and Chris would know some stuff that I didn't know. I'm like, damn, I just talked to this guy. Or they'll talk to a coach on our staff. Who's a, who is like me would do the best for the kid. No Miami fan. And I'm coming over there and they're like, they'll tell him, they'll tell him it's Bernie's my guy. They'll be like, Bernie, um, you need to get Jamie, over here to Tallahassee. He's like, why y'all don't call Coleman? Coleman goes over there every weekend. He's yep. from there. Why wouldn't y'all tell him or figure? But, you know, it's neither here nor there. I think, um, but I, I think about it, if it's if, if it's done for me, then it might be done in other places where we have relationships where mm -hmm. we could probably do a little bit more. Like if I'm, um, if I'm trying to get an end game into American Heritage, Snoop Menace's son goes there. Yeah, Snoop's at every practice. I'm I'm calling Snoop just because, yep. and you know I'm and I'm not calling him. I'm FaceTiming Snoop, and just so happens Jeremiah Smith walks by, and I'm like, yo, yo, like yeah, hey, hey, Jeremiah, oh, oh, incidental contact. You know, I don't really know all the rules. I'm just using that as a, a as a hypothetical. Right. But outside of that, I see people on the timeline crying and complaining that Miami got motion. Miami's 17. We're six, and we're six points behind the University of Florida, who is fourth. Yep. And we're still in it for the five or six. Like, we can only take so many guys, even though the NCAA put some rules out this week that I'm interested to see how Mike's going to use this and how others are going to use it. But we're, we're in it for five to six premium guys. I don't think we take 30. I hope, I hope we don't take 30. Right, I can see us taking twenty five to twenty six. We take depending on some of these guys, we get them. 
we take 25, 26, this is a top five class. Yep. I, I just don't like, I mean, what I like some better, I want I want pass rushers. I do want pass rushers. But and I do want some more linemen, but you know, we we probably we're in it for a blue chip lineman that might flip that we've been talking about. Like that's in the state of Florida that everybody said we whiffed on that. We probably pick pocket USC for two of their guys. So that's not, that's just my opinion. I think I feel good about it. Yeah. Um, you know, like you just said, LJ McCray, we still got Jeremiah Smith out there um, potentially. I don't know how good or what, but we still have him out there potentially. You still have a few D tackles on my, I can't think of my man from, um, from the other side of Tallahassee, on the other side of Tallahassee, um, that's committed to Miami, but it's potentially um, um, a, a flip that could happen. There's a there's a um, a cornerback. Um, excuse me. There's Wardell Matt, who's at UF, who everybody is is saying at safety, who could potentially be flipping. There's still some linebackers that are out there. Like you can't. You're not. You're going to offer three hundred to four, three hundred to five hundred different prospects for every class. You're not going to be able to get 300 to 500 guys to commit. It just doesn't work for you like that. So, like, um, I, I don't know what, what what people want. I don't need, I guess, but that's how I'm built. I don't need a bunch of action to, to when I'm when I see the result. The result is that we're top six, and we have. I think Miami has the same amount of commits that we have right now, if not more. If I got, I got to pull it up. I know Florida has the same amount of commits. Um, that we have. Um, my bad. I'm getting text right now. Um, yeah, Miami's at seven. Yeah, Miami. Actually, I apologize. Miami has one more commit than us. So they have 22 commits. They rank 17th. But if you looked at social media, based upon what our fan base is saying, what we're not doing, and what their fan base is saying they are doing, you would think we were the one ranked 17th and not ranked in the top. Um, are we top five still? I think one poll guy's at six now. Um, are we out of the top five with um, football rankings? But like you would think we're not a top ten program, top ten recruiting class right now. So, um, I mean, we're ahead, we're number one in the ACC, and we're surrounded by a bunch of SEC schools at Ohio State. Yep. So like, let's just enjoy success while you have it. And something else that I want everybody to pay attention to is, is they're worried about how many. We take in this class 26, 27, 25. Norvell's going to leave six to seven spots open for tra- uh, for transfers. It's it's just the way it's going to be because we are going to have some guys leave. There's going to be some quality guys leave. Benson will end up leaving. Uh, you're going to have some offensive linemen that end up leaving. You're going to have uh, Tatum Mathune leaving. You're going to have Johnny Wilson potentially leaving. Keon Coleman potentially leaving. You got a lot of guys that are going to be leaving. So there will be some transfer spots that will be open. I would say on the upper range of six or seven. So you're, you're going to end up having a decent amount of guys uh, that you'll have spots open for. Um, I think everybody's worried about linebacker too much. I think with what you've already got, plus what's coming in, plus what you're probably going to try to pull out of the transfer portal like you did Tatum Bethune, uh, you'll be fine at linebacker. DB, you're going to be perfectly fine. Um, you got gentlemen coming in, you know, that are KJ Bolton, Charles Lester. Uh, I love Miami fans when they they talk about Charles Lester's not a take. That's the only reason he's at Florida State because Miami didn't want him. Whatever. You, anybody they don't get, they don't want until they start going after him again. Then it's they're a lot. So it is what it is, and Florida State. In the rankings of where they are as far as on the field is what matters. And there's a lot of football to be played, and that's going to determine a couple of guys' decisions on where they go. I promise you. Florida State ends up winning an ACC championship this year. You probably land one guy or two guys that you weren't planning on us landing. You end up going to the college football playoffs, you might land a guy that you weren't planning on landing. If for some reason that Florida State pulls it all together and gets really hot, in November and December, and they end up winning a national title or playing for a national title, you might land a couple of guys that you never planned on seeing at Florida State. So 
I think that there's a lot of stuff that can be happening um, that, that we're worried about in the wrong way. Florida State did very good in the offseason on recruiting. They're doing very good during the season on recruiting as well. They've had one home game, and they had 60-something recruits show up. They've got this home game, the, the very next one, which is the second of the season, there's going to be 65, 70 guys there. And we're all worried about what Florida State's doing recruiting with. I, look, all I can tell you is the Florida State's not going to be hurting the defensive line. Farmer's probably going to be back. I don't see Daryl Jackson leaving. He could. I just don't see it happening. He needs more film time. He needs stuff to show that he's going to be that guy. Um, you got Ioto Afasi that's going to be here next year. All of these guys I'm talking about are very good. They're quality. They're, they're, they're not – it's not like we're taking this deep dive and putting 250 pounders in at defensive tackle. That's not happening. And then you're going to see the portal open up, and there's going to be numbers of guys that are transferring out because their team's not what they were supposed to be. I'm worried for – well, I don't really care, but I wonder what Florida loses after this season, not just in recruiting, but also that's already on their roster. I, I, I think they're going to lose quite a bit, and I'm not trying to be no kind of way, but if you can't get Kamari Wilson, if that's not if I think that's the right kid, Kamari Wilson, the, the DB that's at Florida that we wanted before he committed to Florida, if you can't get that kid going, so, something's wrong. That kid's not a bust. I, I don't know what Florida's doing or not doing, but they did something terribly wrong because that kid's good. And then you look at some of their defensive linemen – that are, in my opinion, really good, and they're being utilized incorrectly. I, I don't think the stunts and stuff that Florida does is all that great. I don't know if y'all have listened to the, the Florida defensive coordinator talk, but he says some really dumb shit, puts a lot of big words together that don't match, talks about being um, – Two shit. Mul- what do you, how do you say it, James, exactly? Multiple in the front end and the multiple in the back end, and not everybody is able to do both. But they are m- m- multiple front, like just yeah. It, he's talking about cover five and cover four. He's he's talking some serious shit, and he just said a whole bunch of stuff that people ate into. And I'm not saying the guy's a bad defensive coordinator, but he, he's thirty, what thirty, thirty one, something like that. Yeah, he's young. He's relatively he's, young. He's a young guy. He's never taken a job, but. Florida, uh, you know, a, a place like that in Florida. He, he probably nervous as hell, didn't know what to say, so he just started jumbling a bunch of words together and made a sentence. That's why, That's how I took it. I felt like the guy was nervous. But I think that there's going to be some very good quality players leave the Alabamas, the, the Floridas, the Georgias, uh, in particular Georgia, uh, there's going to be quite a few guys that are going to leave that if y'all don't think Mike Norvell has already talked to and already, or not him personally, but if you don't think Mike Norvell already knows about some guys going to be hitting the portal, you ain't paying attention because he knows who he wants and who he has the possibilities of getting because they're not happy where they are. So I'm not worried about what the 24 guys look like because I know Norvell has got a plan for what it looks like. And I don't and think then, fall off. I think a lot of people got to realize too. There's a major university right now that is going to be be a wholesale um, wholesale changes right there. So um, you know, a lot of those guys are looking out, especially right now with their NIL uh, coming. They basically coming out and saying that the contracts are now void because the head coach is gone. Um, yep. So there's a lot of guys not extremely happy with um, life right now because you made plans for one thing, and um, now all of a sudden you're not. You're not getting those plans. Um, I'm I'm interested to see how how that'll work um, as well. But you, you know, just again, the reality is we have to pay attention to what's going on right now. And again, what you have, you are recruiting better than most of the na- than um, most of the nation, and um, not just your rivals, but most of the nation. So we'll um, and then what we'll see is probably around December, you'll see a lot of um. um of other people not hitting the portal, especially people are going to hit the portal early because they, again, another change that's happening is there's a 45 day window in which you can hit the portal um, without any, um, 
any real rep repercussions outside of you graduating, um, being a, um, a grad transfer. So I think, I mean, it, if that's, again, I, I think a lot of guys, a lot of people just can't be happy with winning. So like, I, I, I just don't, I don't understand that, but maybe they do. And, and that's, this is what they need. James Hunter Richmond, which he comes on here uh, to talk softball with us quite a few times. He comes to the tailgates as well. Um, he's asking, what do we think of the portal changes? What, what are your thoughts on the portal changes in your eyes? I mean, the portal is what it is. I mean, I think this kind of restricts restricts coaches more per se, even though coaches are the biggest criers about the portal, even though they're the ones that use it the most. Um, I think um, I, what I don't like is, is them um, – basically having a you can pick up bring an unlimited number of players in that is that is free agency um without any without any penalties um right now because apr is still suspended so they can really change all of this right now by just by just um unsuspending apr there are some rules for the guy so technically like for example daryl jackson um we kind of need daryl jackson to come back and we need him to graduate and there's a reason why the second school that they transferred to, you're responsible for that scholarship yep. until that scholarship gets off the books, um, either through um, their them playing out their um, eligibility or them graduating. So, you know, like, so that's the only kind of thing that's still out there, and they're fighting that as well. So I don't – I like the transfer portal. I don't like the way the transfer portal or NIL is, um, is actually – discussed but because i really do think that i don't think there's three thousand kids that just decided that i that that have been playing at a high level and competing at a high level their entire lives and decided that all of a sudden i don't want to compete anymore right i've just been in those rooms and i know what those um I, i've heard it you know even at our university but definitely at other universities when you have those exit interviews the exit interviews gives you a clear indication of what it is and what do you do when a coach says i don't think we have a i don't think you fit what we're trying to do moving forward you don't get to stay and compete when a coach says that to you and you know that, that's that's my opinion on it so i'll i'll go with the other one i think the the rule changes on the unofficial visit photo shoots i think that one's more interesting i think it's ignorant first off uh but I will say that the staff that does all the photo shoots with the unofficial visitors, they will probably be happier because they don't have to do as much photo shoots. Um, but for the, look, if everybody has to abide by it, then it's not a, it's not a, you know, well, Florida state doesn't get to do it for unofficial, but it's everybody. Right. So everybody has the same rule in place. So I don't think it's going to hurt us in recruiting. Um, I think it's kind of ignorant that the NCA did it, but, does it end up hurting the schools? No, uh, I don't think it does because here's what you got to look at. Now they get un unlimited official visits. They can take as many official visits as they want to different schools. So unofficial visits may become a thing of the past. It's kind of what it sounds like they're pushing for. But if you can take as many official visits as you want, you know, one per school unless a coaching change happens, then it doesn't really matter. So you're just going to see more kids taking official visits. They'll take 13, 14, 15 a year instead of five. Like was the old rule, you can only take five official visits. So it, it doesn't really change anything. Like I think people are stepping over that point. You know, they're like, well, now they're not letting kids take photo shoots on official visits. Why? It, why does that matter? They have unlimited official visits. Like it doesn't matter. Well, I think the problem is – is you have a limit. I wish they would. I like. I'm not. I told a kid right now. I ain't going nowhere on my senior year if you ain't paying for me to go there. But the problem is, is that I can. If I'm an Alabama commit, I can only go to Alabama once. So like, that's my only thing. Like, you know, I may want to go to Florida State a couple times um, as a commit, but you know. But I think the. I was never dressing up for an official visit. I don't. I didn't like it when Florida kind of during um, 
Mullen's first recruiting class, I think he had the guy, the, the Lakeland, I think it was a, a, at least a couple of the Lakeland kids and the dad dressed up in the, um, in the Florida outfit. Like I'm not going to do all of that. I, that I, I've worn a uniform before. I don't want to wear it again. That's for my son. I, 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 but I do think it was getting a bit much guys that, you know, had no chance of coming to Florida state, um, going and doing it. So, but you know, there's, there's got to be some. You got to make rules when, um, when you got smoke coming down about you know having to make players eligible because this, because a state was about to investigate and sue your sue the brakes off of you. Well, I think another thing that people are misconstruing is is it doesn't stop young men from taking on official visits to check out the game. It's not like they said, hey, they can't get tickets to watch the game. It only thing that they're not getting on coming on an unofficial visit is they're not getting the photo shoot. That's it. That's the only thing that they're not getting. So how many photo shoots do you want to take? And if you want to take, usually they only give them one anyway, usually. So if you come on an official visit to Florida State, you get your photo shoot. If you go to Alabama on an official visit, you get your photo shoot. If you come on your unofficial visit, now you just don't get your photo shoot. That's it's the only difference. So I, I don't I don't think it's that big of a deal, to be honest. I don't think it's I don't think it's that wild. I just think that they're gonna want to see kids take more official visits, excuse me, to more schools than than normal because it also eliminates the NCAA have having to investigate unofficial visits. Uh. That's what that's where the money play comes in. The NCAA looked at their numbers and said, you know, we're having to investigate X amount of unofficial visits because they took a photo shoot. Did they did they get paid under the table? Did this happen? Did that happen? On official visits, everything's recorded. What I mean by recorded, the school states what they spent, the school states what motels they stayed in, who they brought, what food was ordered, blah, 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 blah. So it's making the job easier for the NCAA. And it's causing them not to spend costly money. Like it, That's what it's about. It all comes down to money. The NCAA goes, tired of investigating unofficial visits. So if we take the photo shoot away, less contact with the actual coaches, less contact with the staff. It, it, it helps them. So I, I think that's the real changes for it. I don't think it stops Florida State from landing good recruiting classes or any other school because everybody needs to abide by the rule. Um, I see that we have trolls in here talking about our two-point win against BC and our if, if, if Clemson wouldn't have missed a field goal. And, you know, if Clemson or BC would have scored more points than us, they'd have won the ball game. But they didn't. That if – just didn't happen. Um, the tailgate, the tailgate link for you to buy tailgate tickets will be in this video in the description. It's in every other video in the description already, but it will be in the description of this video about ten minutes after it's over. With tickets are for sale. It's in lot nineteen at the top of the garage, which is lot nineteen, the top portion of the garage. The tickets are up for sale now. It, James, is it starting at 12 or is it starting at 1? Like 12, 12, 15-ish should be everything. is should be ready to go. I mean, the game starts at 3.30, so it's basically going to be a quick tailgate. So um, I think Cheese is going to have his um, blow-up um, screen. So okay. And as long as they don't jam the signal, which sometimes it's not necessarily they do it on purpose. It's just very – if you've been to a game, it's very hard to use your cell phone and your internet. And um, things like that. That's why I like sitting in the Champions Club. Yep. Um, but um, you know, if you want to do that, they'll um, they'll definitely be. Um, you know, the TV will be there at the tailgate, at the top of Lot 19. Especially should be good weather. Should be actually nice, cool, crisp. Um, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, we're in the fall now. Yeah, cool, crisp autumn um, evening. Um, a good um, or afternoon for some football. I think everybody should be ready for it. I think it's going to be, it's going to be a great game back at home. Uh, we owe Virginia Tech this ass whooping that's coming. Recruits are going to have fun. Families are going to have fun. Go to the tailgate. You have double the fun. So I, I, I don't see anything bad coming out of this. The weather is supposed to be good. There's not supposed to be no crazy amount of rain or wind storms or 
No BS like that. So I, I think that everybody that has the opportunity to go to the game, go. Um, if anyone's trying to sell tickets, I have multiple people on um, my Facebook group page that are looking. Also, I've had quite a few people writing me asking me about tickets. So if you have them for sale, as long as you're not trying to do something crazy like double the money. Like I've seen a lot of people try to sell tickets for three, four times the amount that they paid for them. I, if you're going to send me those types of prices, don't worry about sending me that. Um, I, I don't care um, that, that they're going for that on this website, that website. I don't care about none of that. If you truly want Knowles to set in your seats because you can't make it, get your money back or make 25 bucks on each one of them or something. But this whole five, $600 for the 47th row shit, that, that's got to stop. We're playing Virginia Tech, people. Calm down. Um, any game you can lose, I understand that. But y'all are – some of these people are acting crazy with their ticket resale prices. Like, I've seen a couple of people selling um, uh, Champion Club tickets for 400 bucks, And you can go to StubHub and get them for 150 to 200 So, chill out. You, you, you're getting out there. You're, you're tripping. Um but with that being said, James is 968 away from 4,000 subscribers on Den Media Group. Go over to his YouTube channel. Subscribe to his channel. He'll be giving away 400 bucks if he gets to the 4,000. He's also going to be giving away two pairs of tickets to the Miami game if he hits, is it 5,000? If he hits 5,000. So the quicker we get him to four and 5,000 subscribers, the quicker everybody wins money and wins tickets and, and gets to enjoy some really good content at the same time. And if you haven't subscribed to this channel, like this video, share this video. Once this video is over, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. A lot of people have recently contacted me and said, Chris, I thought I've been subscribed to your channel this whole time. And all I'm doing is logging on and going straight to sporadics and watching. I, I didn't know I wasn't subscribed. All you got to do is go up to the main page, make sure where it says subscribe, that it says subscribed. If you're not, make sure you do. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. I would really appreciate everybody to tell a friend that that's an old fan or tell a family member that's an old fan to come check out Spear Addicts and subscribe to the channel. Check out the membership. Check out the, the shop where you can buy merchandise for the memberships and blah, blah, and et cetera. Um, I'm, I'm getting ready to uh, – I'm trying to talk to the David Pollock people to find out when we can get him on the show to talk some Florida State football stuff that he's been seeing because he's put out some really good stuff here lately about what he sees Florida State doing. He also picked Florida State to beat Clemson. He picked Florida State to beat LSU. He's picking Florida State to do quite a few things. I would like to have him on here and let all the fans know where he comes from, you know, why he's got Florida State doing so well and why Florida State is much better than they have played to this point because they've only played one really good half of football. The crazy part is is that Florida State is 4-0 and they haven't played four quarters of football yet. They have yet to play a complete game. They're still beating teams like LSU, Clemson, and so on and so on without playing their best game. So what is this team going to look like when they start putting together a full game? It would be huge. Um, but Pollock, David Pollock, every X post that he makes with his stuff on it, he tags me in it. Um, we've had some messages back and forth, and he's a really cool guy. He's busy as hell, but – um, he, I guess a lot of people thought once he wasn't no longer on uh, game day, college game day, that he wasn't going to be busy anymore, but he created his own thing and it took off like a skyrocket. So it's doing really well. Um, he continuously tags me in all of the posts. So I reached out and said, Hey man, I would love to have you on the show. So we're going to see what we can make happen. Um, and I would love to be able to announce that soon, but uh, David Pollock was a beast at Georgia. He, he was. He, he was a great player, in my opinion. Um, Kirk Herbstreet was a player at Ohio State. I don't think he was near as good as what David Pollock was to Georgia. 
And nah, I mean, David was that guy. Yeah. I played against him in 02 in the Sugar Bowl. Exactly. So James knows firsthand exactly what David Pollock is. And it would be cool. I don't know if James has talked to David Pollock since he played him. I have no idea. But it would be cool to hear them two talk about just that alone. You remember playing me in 02? I was the fullback. You were the – yeah. So, yeah, it would be a cool conversation on top of where everybody's at because there's a – and James knows it. Pollock knows it. Help. If you're a fan of football, I think you should know it. But there are so many NFL stars that you would not believe the a year, even during while they were still in the league, were absolutely broke. They, they, they were bankrupt. And you've got guys like – James didn't have a 10-year career in the NFL, but he's doing better than most that did. That's what's wild to me. Like these guys got multi-million dollar contracts year after year after year – and they're filing bankruptcy before they even get out of the league all the way. And then you've got guys like Peter Wart, Snoop Menace. Now, Pete Dub played and, and he did well, but he didn't play as long as he would have liked because of injury. And these guys were smart enough to keep making money and have money make money for them. That's why I think Florida State has a unique position if they would bring in their former players to talk to the current players about how this money does not last forever and how you get this money to continue making money for you instead of going and buying uh, the, the new Bugatti or the new this or the new that. Like, I'm sorry, but I'm perfectly fine with saving a shit ton of money and posing like you own a Ferrari Enzo. I, I don't care. Go lease that son of a bitch. I can't even lease one, so go ahead. Well, what, I don't get the difference. You're gonna, you're not gonna like the car in a year anyway. You're gonna want a new one anyway. So why buy it for one point three million when you could lease it for forty eight months or twelve months? What's the difference? You're gonna probably trade it in anyway, and it's losing fifty percent of its value. What are we doing? So I would really like to to see, um, and I think Florida State's doing a phenomenal job as far as um, NIL goes. I just think that we could do even better with bringing some of our guys back to talk to these young men about how to manage their money, how their money can make them money. Uh, I mean, there's so many little easy secrets about opening this particular account, and in five years it's doubled. There's all these little things that they can do instead of – and I'm cool with the T-shirts. I'm cool with the clothing lines. I don't have a problem with that, but some of these guys ain't going to make a whole lot of money off of that, and they're spending money. They're getting inventory. And y'all know how that goes. If you get a bunch of inventory and you can't sell it, what'd you do? You wasted money. I'm and when it just sits right there and collects dust, it's hard. Big checks I get go to my um, high interest um, savings account that gets five percent. I'm I, I, my my um my my high risk comes in businesses, in business acquisitions, and trying to flip like that. I don't know how to play stocks. I'm not gonna pretend to know how to do that stuff. But what I do know is that if I put you know. A couple hundred into this account right here, it could pay me back a lot. So, right. um, you know, and a lot of guys are doing that. It's a lot of smart guys. It, it, it typically it, it's the guys that you never think that are smart are the ones that are smart. Like like Marshawn Lynch is a guy who everybody thought was just going to be a dumb job, but it turns out that he was the he was the one giving all the financial advice, right? Um, when he was playing, so. I think stuff like that's amazing because Marshawn is that guy. I liked his last few comments. This is completely off subject, but that Russell Wilson and Pete Carroll were just the head coach and the quarterback while he was there. He don't keep in touch with those guys. I thought so, that was wild. I had it. Me and so me and Denny Thompson um, when we had our show Sports Den, we we did a um, we would have a lot of former players um, come on, and there's a guy who played for the Seahawks during that time, who went to Clay High School, surrounding county, um, right around here, right around by Jacksonville. So he, um, we, we, were, we were talking about Russell, and this was, you know, just, hey, what is Russell like? And this was before, because my joke was, we had a producer, and he would wear the Hawaiian shirts and the khaki shorts, and he was a big goofball. But he knew who Future was, and he knew a bunch of other stuff. He was an old white guy. And I said, Russell Wilson stole my dog's entire swag. 
stole everything about him before Russell really started getting with Sierra. And so we asked him, we said, hey, man, um, you know, what was that? What is Russell really like? And he corroborated. He said, Russell's just a, he's just a, he's a lame. He's a good guy, but he's just a lame. He's different. He's, you know, motive. He tries to, he's, he's everything that you kind of think about. And, um, you know, he's not going to go out with you guys. He's not going to do all these different things. It's just, he is what he is. And he was starting to become a diva and a lot of the other things. And, and sometimes a woman changes you, um, you know, Women will say it's for the best, but women have never been in a locker room. So they won't really necessarily know what guys got. And some and a lot of guys have never who have never been in a locker room will never understand why guys are saying the things that they're saying. It doesn't mean that he likes future and that he supports deadbeat dads or some mess. He just doesn't like that guy. And and that's also the NFL. I don't like all of my teammates. But my teammates did their job. They're still my teammates. And I think people take, like, if you hear me and Crow talk, we're going to talk like brothers, right? We grew up in Tallahassee. There's a lot of similarities. We hung out. We'll see each other. It's vibes. I like Matt Myrod, who was my teammate, too. And we'll kick it and we'll reconnect. But, like, and then, like, or, or Corey Niblock. But it's not like me and Crow hanging out. Right. It's, it's a different relationship. And then there's just guys who I barely remember they freaking played on the team. And it does, it's, it, it's just everybody's not, it's not the, oh, that's my brother and we did this and we're going to, no, nah, we probably won't talk to each other until we see each other. Like, I'm like, I hung out with Lorenzo Booker all the time. I haven't talked to Lil Book in years, um, which, you know, it's probably my fault more than his, but it's just certain guys you're going to hang out with, some guys you won't. And I think it's, you know, people tr people want you to. I've never seen a culture that says that. Like my father was not a great guy, but he has some great quotes, and he's tried. He tries sometimes, but he says you can't pretend to not give a, a f and then proceed to give a f. And nowhere, in, nowhere is it worse than everybody on social media. All my haters, I ain't paying attention to this and that. And then in two tweets later, you're crying about. Oh, well, nobody cares about me. Nobody does this or blah, blah, blah. It, it either matters or it doesn't matter. And Russell Wilson, it's his defense. He goes on his life like he's living his life. He's living his truth. And he don't care. And guess what Marshawn's doing? He don't care. But right now, Marshawn was poised with the question. And Marshawn should be mad. I don't like Russell because Marshawn didn't get the ball on the one-yard line. And no matter what you tell me, the quarterback could have audible to make sure he got that ball on the one yard line. That's it. And mm -hmm. Russell was not dating both of those twins. He was dating one of them, and they were twin sisters, and they just went everywhere together. They 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 were book book was a smooth operator, and book's baby mama Lacey bad, but book wasn't that bad of a man where he was banging two twins like twin sisters. Dog. I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and negate that. He may y'all may call me a hater, but I'm gonna be like, nah, book, you wasn't doing it like that, bro. <sighs> well, James, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna let you get off here, and I'm gonna do my little five minute rant. And um, I hope everyone goes and checks out the tailgate. Get the tickets. Um, make sure you 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 check out the tailgate because it's. Oh, he did say twin, not twins. Oh, like okay. um, but y'all make sure that you, you get the tailgate tickets. Uh, James, I have not the greatest news. I don't know if I'm going to get to the tailgate before it's over. I'm going to have yeah. a hard time doing it. Okay. Uh, some work things came up that I don't, I can't, I ain't got no control over it. Uh, so I, I might get there a little bit late to the game, or I might end up being there at the beginning of the tailgate. I will know better. Tomorrow and definitely Saturday morning, and I will right now. But depending on how this goes tomorrow, I will know. Um, but I'll definitely hit you up um, and let you know way before then. Uh, oh, no, you can't leave yet because they said you ain't gave a score prediction. Oh. 42. Uh, Forty-two twenty, Florida State. I like yeah, it. Yeah. Mine was mine was forty-five to seventeen. So 
Very close. But I'm going to give some advice to the Florida Gator fans real quick. I continuously hearing them talk about Billy Napier needs to get an offensive coordinator. Billy Napier's plays are very vanilla. Uh, the routes don't make sense. This, that, and the other, right? Have you ever thought that Billy Napier is having to make plays that well fit his his talent at quarterback, his talent at offensive line? Your offensive line struggling terribly. Your quarterback is not a deep thrower, okay? He's not – I know that what he you've seen him do, he hasn't played a bad game. Do you not think that's by design that Billy Napier is not doing plays that he knows this young man can complete? Think about this for a second. Like, you go back and look at what he did at the Raging Cajuns. You look at what he tried to do with um, Anthony Richardson. Anthony Richardson didn't have a problem – taking deep ball, taking it down the field. The problem was he was inaccurate at times, probably more so than not. But there were way more risk with Anthony Richardson than there has been with Mertz. Mertz looks 10 times better with the Florida Gators than he ever did at Wisconsin. I think that's because Billy Napier has basically planned his playbook around what his quarterback can and cannot do. Also, I think – Anthony Richardson had a more talented offensive line in front of him, the reason you were able to run the ball better. You can have the greatest running backs of all time, but if there is no one blocking correctly, those guys aren't going to be able to do much, man. Like everybody's getting after them for their run game. They should run the ball more. Your offensive line's just trash this year. And run scheme, it's not doing good. And your quarterback is not talented enough to really scheme up some nice passing plays. Plus, your offensive line isn't protecting the quarterback long enough for him to make deep throws. And other than Andy Gene, who's really getting separation? Like, that's what I think that y'all aren't looking at. And I look, long as you keep Billy Napier and extend him, I do not care if he gets an offensive coordinator or not. I'm just saying, use a little bit of common sense here. Pay attention to to the fact that they may be – this may be the playbook that's comfortable for Mert, uh, Mertz and the the offensive line being not good. Now, your defense has no excuse. Your defense is full of dogs, what should have been dogs. I, they're not acting like it, but they should be. Um, but I love that y'all are down. I love that y'all are going through – what Florida State went through with Willie Taggart, and y'all kept saying we were never going to be back, we were never going to be good again, we'd be lucky to ever beat them again, and now you're going through it. You're seeing what rebuilds really look like. The fact is, is we know we've got our guy. You still have a jury out and has no idea if Billy Napier is your guy or not. So in all hopes, I pray that you give him an extension until 2055. Pray for it to happen. Now let's jump over to the Miami fans. You keep talking about if Clemson if Clemson would have made the field goal. If Boston College wouldn't have had so many penalties. If Florida State wouldn't have scored 31 points. If Florida State wouldn't have made that sack. Then half the game didn't happen. Like, what are we talking about? All these ifs and ifs, and they're not that good, and if, and y'all are, like, really living on the facts of possibilities instead of facts of what happened. You really wished they wouldn't have missed that field goal. You really wished we wouldn't have made that strip sack. You really wish Boston College would have beat us. It's as simple as this. If Boston College would have scored more points than Florida State, they'd have won the game. They didn't. LSU, if they would have scored more points than Florida State, they'd have won the game, but they didn't. Miami needs to worry about actually playing someone with a pulse. Oh, my God, y'all beat Texas A&M at home. You have one good win under your belt. How good is it? 
We don't know yet because the only thing that y'all can point to is how good they've done since they've lost to you. They've played who again? Who have they? Who have they played? I'm, I'm wondering because you talk about Texas A&M winning this game and that game, and and they haven't lost anybody but y'all. They played Auburn. Who hasn't beat Auburn? But Auburn gave Georgia a run for their money. Okay, Georgia had a bad game. Okay, but they didn't win the game the same way they didn't beat you. The same way Texas A&M did not beat you is the same way Auburn did not beat Texas A&M. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that matchups don't matter at all, but y'all are basing everything off of matchups, and it's ridiculous. Y'all know this for a fact that when Florida State plays Miami, that we've had really, we've had bad Florida State teams beat good Miami teams. Y'all have had bad Miami teams beat good Florida State teams. In this rival game, that shit don't always matter. Is Miami a better team than they were last year? God, I hope so. And it looks to be so. But can you start winning some conference games? Can you play? You know, y'all said that we we should have lost to Clemson. Beat, beat Clemson by 50 points. And then watch when you come and play us how the game is going to be so different. It doesn't matter how bad you beat anyone else. It doesn't matter how bad we don't beat someone else. It only matters what happens when Florida State and Miami lines up to play the game. That's all that matters. As far as you, you can't predict who's going to win against Florida State and Miami based off of who beat who worse. That's not how this works. I love that y'all continuously take every one of my posts and you keep getting views. You keep reposting it. You keep liking it. You repost it again. And I posted something a month ago, and you guys got it all the way. I got another 23,000 views on it because y'all continued to repost it. Thank you. You're making me money. I appreciate it. So all I can say is, is Miami can continue to be – they're not humble, that's for sure. They are stating that they're the only team in the country – that cannot be messed with, but then they turn and say, but I'm not saying we're the best team in the country. What the hell does that even mean? Are, are you serious right now? If you're the only team that cannot be beaten, then how are you not the best team in the country? That doesn't make any sense. Are you saying that your schedule is the 90th, 90th strongest schedule in the country? Oh, I, okay. That's true. That's a true measure. If you look, at the first four games that you played, one team, one team that also went five and seven last year, who has four wins this year and one loss to y'all. What are you going to say if Texas A&M ends up going seven and five or five and seven again? What if they only win one more game? So you beat a five and seven. So what? The same way I don't care how good LSU is. I don't care about how good they were. Florida State needs to win all of its games. Whoever lines up against us win. I don't care how you win as long as you win. That's all Miami should be worried about. But no, they're worried about how bad we didn't beat somebody. They're steadily worried about how we did not blow Clemson out or how we did not blow out Boston College. Why are you so worried about what we did or didn't do when you beat three cupcake teams and one team with a pulse? They're saying that Florida State's overrated. No team in this country is more overrated than Miami right now. People are legitimately thinking that off of the games that they've won that we've actually seen something. Your team hasn't been challenged. You haven't had competition after competition against you. What are we talking about? Like, are, are you serious? You're not going to tell me that playing Bethune-Cookman one weekend and Temple the next was any type of challenge. I don't understand what we're talking about. I give credit where credit's due. Miami looks like a very improved team compared to they were last year. I'm not going to lie about it and say that they're not better. They are better. Why would I lie and say that they're not? I want Miami to be good again so that when we play each other 
And whomever wins, it means more than you get to talk about it for a year. I want it to actually change the polls. I want it to be for the playoffs. I want it to be for the ACC title or whatever conference we end up in. That's what I want. I, I don't want you to be dog shit for the rest of your life. I don't want Miami to stay in a 20-year drought and make it 35. I don't want that. I like when Miami and Florida State games mean something. Same way I like when Florida and Florida State games mean something. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't want you to beat us ever. I don't want you to ever beat us. But I would not mind if you beat everybody else on your schedule and then play us every year and lose to us only. That's the only one loss you'll have every year. I'm perfectly fine with that. But it doesn't mean that I want you to be complete garbage. I don't have a problem with saying that Tyler Van Dyke is playing much better this year than he did under Josh Gaddis last year. I have no problem with that. I have no problem with saying that your defense looks better than it did last year. What I have a problem with is that y'all are four games in and you act like you should be crowned right now with a national title. That's my only issue. And I will, as a Florida State diehard fan, will give Miami credit where credit's due. But all Miami fans can say is that Florida State's overrated. We're garbage. We hate Florida State. We hope they never win another game. And I know a lot of that's trolling, and I get it. I do. I really get that. But I'm telling you right now, it's not good for college football when Florida State, Miami, and Florida are bad. It is terrible. It is for me anyway. I hate watching the Oklahomas or the Texas or the Alabamas or the Clemsons I don't want to see Clemson ever run the ACC again. I want to see Miami and Florida State play for that championship every year for him, however many more years we're in it on out. That's what I want to see. You know why? Because those games do numbers. The best recruits in the world are going to come to that game. And we're going to start seeing those, those classic, instant classic games against Florida State and Miami again. I don't like this, we're good for four years, and then y'all are good for four or five years, then we're good for four or five years. I don't want these games to be ass whoopings for four and five years on one side and then the other. I would much rather us play 27 to 24, 35 to 31. I would much rather see those games again. And look, man, I'm going to say this. One thing that Florida State fans and Miami fans can agree on, we hate the University of Florida. We hate the Gators. Now, you also, Miami fans, have in common with Florida fans that you hate Florida State. And us in Florida have in common, we hate Miami. But the difference is, is that some of the best college football games to have ever been played are between Florida State and Miami. I, I don't care what anybody says. Those are some of the greatest games that have ever been played. Some of the greatest players ever have been in those games. Some of the greatest coaches, some of the greatest everything have been in those games, and it has set Florida, the state, up for having the greatest athletes to come out of any state because of how great these teams play. So, yes, I don't want to see Miami struggle for the next five years. No, I don't. I want to see them compete and compete with us, and that be the game that we see that, man, that was one of the greatest games I ever watched. Do I ever like losing to Miami? Absolutely not. But I also can't stand a game where we win 45-3. to three. Like, it's boring as hell. It's boring. I don't care what anybody says, it's boring. No, and that, that's very true. You know, Florida State is the only team that plays both Florida and Miami every year. And it is true that Miami is not the ones that backed out of playing Florida every year. The University of Florida stopped scheduling Miami. So if anybody wants truth behind that, Miami did not back down. Supposedly the Tom Petty song of UF is never back down. Well, UF stopped scheduling Miami. That is true, 100% fact. I don't care what Gator fans say and what excuses they come up with. I know for a fact that the Florida fan, I mean the Florida University stopped scheduling Miami. They completely just stopped. So it is what it is. Florida State ain't never stopped playing them. And Miami, 
has stopped us from winning national championships because of beating us in the wide lefts, wide rights. It, it's happened. And some of those teams were good, and some of them weren't. They weren't playing for a national championship that year when they beat us, but they knew how much that game between Florida State and Miami meant, and they gave us all we wanted. And there's been times that we've played down to the biter, both being good teams, and that decided who goes to the national title. So those games need to go back to that. Florida State Miami needs to get back to where that was. And it, right now, in, in this part of the season, it looks like Florida State and Miami are finally doing what they're supposed to. But I'm never going to stop trolling Miami for the fun of it because I'm a Florida State fan. But I am not going to disrespect Miami as a, as a powerhouse in college football as they were. I can't erase history, and I don't want to. Um, I respect Miami for what they've done. I respect Miami for what they're trying to do now. I want to keep these kids in the state of Florida. Whether it be at Florida, Florida State, or Miami, I don't give a crap. I just want us to play the best and them to have to play the best, and this means something again. But I think y'all are doing better this year, but uh, you're, getting, you're getting your ass whooped in Tallahassee this year. It's that quick. Florida State's going to whoop that ass this year. Um, and I hope it's a good game. I really do. Um, but with that being said, y'all, I hope to see y'all at the Virginia Tech game. It's sold out, uh, but there are some tickets up for selling uh, SeatGeek. So if you need tickets and you want to save 20 extra bucks, go to SeatGeek. Use all capital letters, Spiratics, in the promo code section, and you will get $20 extra off of your tickets. So if you need tickets to this game, go to SeatGeek. Use promo code SPIRATICS in all caps and it'll get you an extra 20 bucks off. Y'all have a good rest of your evening. See y'all Saturday, and go Knowles.